welcome to Just Paint It. I'm Christina Watts, a multimedia artist living in Prince George, BC, and today we're going to paint a lovely winter northern light scene with a snowman. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is take my large MDF panel board. These are nice slim ones and fit into a standard frame. And I'm going to go ahead and start dipping right into my black. Now I've got two colors on the palette to begin with, a black and an ultramarine blue. These are really great because we're going to tone the canvas with this before we start building up our lights. Now when you need to cover a big area, you want to use a bigger brush. Yeah, it's looking pretty good for a base coat. We've toned our canvas and now we have to let this dry and we'll come back and we'll put on our winter scene. You're going to love this. I'm going to sink the northern lights back in here and then it's probably some little mountains here and then down here we'll put our um, trees and a little snow guy. So what I have now on my palette is a phthalo green and we also have a cobalt blue and some titanium white. Now I did put a, an extender into my titanium white because it is a heavy body acrylic and the other two are more fluid acrylics. So just note that you'll want your um, paints to really smooth, go smoothly over your canvas. So let's dig in. So this time I have a one inch brush and I'm dipping into the white and then jumping over into the phthalo green and I'm going to go for it. Now we're going to drop our horizon line down so that it's more about the northern lights here. So if we went halfway, it would look a little weird. So we'll drop it down. We'll put it on the rule of thirds line here and just start throwing in our northern lights. So one thing you'll want to do is drag it out quite a bit of uh, through the canvas. So I am definitely using big, big brush strokes here. And you will want these strokes to be organic. So if you're doing things where it's just straight up, you're probably not going to like that as much as if the northern lights was dancing and nice and fluid all over your canvas. Now on occasion, I will take a little bit of blue just to throw that in because it's really pretty mixed in with the phthalo green and the white and it just adds that color variation to the northern lights that we love so much. Hey, I will fill this up and then I'm going to pull back into the sky. So what I mean by pull back into the sky is right now I am going up and I am going through here and there's my blue. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, but I'm going to get a darker blue because I want to start, see how this is starting to be on the same level up here. I need to adjust that. And the way that I'm going to adjust that is to throw in a darker blue and drag it back through here. Now again, work with a bigger brush and come down the fur farther than your horizon line because we're going to put those mountains in and uh, that's going to really make a lot of difference. And we also want to make sure there's contrast. So you don't want to blend too much in here, but definitely get your whites in. Come over on this side. Work fast because we need to put in, there's some more blue. Because what we're going to do next is we are going to put in a darker blue. So I'm getting a ultramarine blue and I'm putting it down here because I need to drag that back in. So notice I haven't washed my brush at all. I'm just keeping this dirty brush and we don't want to have this like black shade just so obvious here. So now I've got this darker blue and I'm pulling it in here into my northern lights and letting it blend a little bit with these colors. This is going to create some nice little pockets of darkness and depth and because we had our black and our blue down first we're going to have a really nice transparent layer showing through. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good for some starting on the northern lights. So let's let this dry a little bit and we'll come in and do a little mountain range back here. Okay, we've let this dry a little bit. You can see it's still glossy, so it's still wet down here. And um, actually, I actually think I'm going to utilize that in behind. But uh, as you can see, the colors are really beautiful. They're coming out. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to get my white and put it on the side, maybe a little bit of the green. 
and some blue and I really just want a light sort of blue green color to start with and then when it comes to mountains the thing that you don't want to do is this so we learned in um, elementary school that that's how you did mountains and it is except for we want these to be more organic so what you want to do is you want to take and I am using just a little uh, flat brush I think this is a three quarters no probably just a half and you want to jiggle it down have a peak big and come in and smooth some of these out and go back up again rule of thirds for mountain peaks works good Okay, so we're doing pretty good here. One, two, three, kind of four, five peaks in the second one going up there. That seems reasonable to me. And I'm going to go ahead and fill it in with more of the white. Drag it down here. We want a bit of a horizon line here. So I am just going ahead and swooping one in. Some of your strokes long and some short. Okay, these are not rocket science. Do you can get away with all kinds of things with mountains? And um, see how that color there is just from the northern lights is really pretty. I like it, and I will utilize it. Good for my mountains for now. I may make some uh, adjustments later, but um, that's really pretty. Now we need to put in our snow, and for that I am using two blues and the white because I want this base to be uh, just a little bit different and I will put some more snow colors on top but I'm gonna go and do some horizontal streaks like this I'll shift it over to the white here and there now I did use a little brush to cover all this ground so look at how much more work I have to do let's cheat let's go get my other brush this one also has green on it and that's okay because northern lights can be reflected down here too now we're covering some ground all right we have this dry um, i love the mountains and this looks like kind of like a cloudy feel right now so that's perfect uh, now we have to think about where are we going to put our snowman and um, you should always maybe like maybe not have them directly in the middle but a little off kilter so this side or this side and at this point I started thinking is there anything in my canvas I want to hide so I would consider um, like it looks pretty good but I think right here would be pretty good for my snowman I'm gonna dip my brush this time in water because my white paint is kind of drying a little bit and I want it to float off my brush nicely nicely if I can talk uh, and so let's go here so snowman are pretty simple we are gonna do say round head here start small because you can work your way up right jump a little bit back here and take a look at this and see if I like it the way it is not too worried about this pointy bottom because I'm gonna put some snow there and it's gonna look great yeah that will work really enjoying that okay so um, now what I have to do is grab some um, dark colors here I'm gonna use blue green sometimes I throw some burnt umber into this to make it a dark gray without using black sometimes I'll just jump over and grab the black but pretty rare that I do that this time I did I did take black and add it to that mix so let's put in some trees trees are pretty interesting we can throw like a little bit off in the background here there's a trunk there another trunk there maybe a smaller one there so we have again rules of threes maybe we want to stand here now if they come down in the front you want to drop your trunk right so these ones are a little bit off in the distance this one's coming a bit forward so maybe i'll bring that tree up a little higher and 
Oh, let's put some over here too. Okay, there's a little one there. One, two, three, four, five. We have five, so I'm just keeping cognizant uh, counting of my trees. Now that I have my trunks in, we're gonna go and, now a lot of times people really enjoy coming down and going out the side, but what I see people do a lot of is this, and it's called a fishbone tree, and that's where they've done each side all the way down. But that doesn't really look that great. So what I say is make sure you got a good top, and you can do those wisps down, but you have to make sure that you also come down in front of your trunk. You wanna leave room so that you can see the background through the trees, and obviously you wanna have your branches come out further as they come down. Okay, so that is a nice easy tree. Anybody can do that one. Little wisps out to the side. Uh, do some more of this one here. We can even leave chunks and gaps out of them. I mean, trees aren't perfect. Now let's see, how many trees is that? We got pretty good trees there. If I tilt it, we can see some of it without the glare. Probably would help if I used my glasses, but we don't always need to have your glasses for painting. Sometimes it's better to squint because then you see the colors better. So yeah, he's a little pretty good. Um, I feel like he needs to be in more of a forest. Let's do some more trees. Yeah, that one worked out great, right? Now, it's a good one there. It's pretty lonely over here. It's only got the one tree. So let's put one right maybe up here. So the reason why I'm thinking this tree would be good here is to create contrast again from the snowman and the background. So giving this a tip here. Any little boreal trees off in the distance. Yeah, that looks good. And let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, two. So let's put another one over there. Mm -hmm. Make this one come down a little bit. It'll be like a little short tree. Now here's the thing. So these trees have gaps between them, right? I'll put this one over top so it's nice. But um, you need to layer your trees. So in this case here, see this one, these two are going to have to overlap. And I'm not too worried about them looking weird right now because I'm going to snow cap these trees. But in order to snow cap these trees, and I think because this, this tree's coming in front of this snow guy, I'm going to go ahead and put it over top of him too. That means that I won't have to paint as much. Trees are easy. Just got to do lots of them. Get Do a bunch and it will get a uh, repetitious process for you. And you will just nail your trees down. Okay. I like that. That's looking good. So let's go back to our snowman and we'll work on that. We're going to let him dry a bit though, because if we start working in the snowman while it's still wet, then those colors are just going to blend together and um, we want the colors to be clean lines. Okay, let's put the finishing touches on our snowman. So um, we're going to do the trees, we're going to do snowman, and we're going to do some stars in the sky. And for that, I'm going to use a toothbrush. So I love doing the splattering with a toothbrush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my toothbrush in water really good. So I have a good pool of paint on it and I'm gonna add it into my white paint. And I just wanna make sure that it's fluid enough so that when I do use the spraying, it comes off the brush. And if it's too thick, it will just stay on the brush. And um, you'll be wondering why it didn't work. So here we go, we've got it on there. My toothbrush is pretty loaded. And now the deal is you gotta put your 
So you, it's already putting your thumbs up and you want to tip back and let it spring forward, okay? So what we're doing is tipping back and letting it spring forward. Now we have what could be stars, we could have snow. I guess it wouldn't be snowing necessarily if the northern lights were out. So we'll say that those are stars. Now you can also go ahead and put some spray down here if you still have some on your brush. And we are going to add snow down here anyways, so that's uh, just fun. Okay, so I love the way that looks, and let's go ahead grabbing our little round brush. You just want to use a detail one. You want to think, okay, what is going on? Where is the snow guy looking? Probably out to the northern lights. So it could be a nose here with the mouth here. He could be looking straight up and uh, arms out and really just enjoying the night sky. And I think um, that's what I'll choose to do today. That is my favorite position for a snowman. Maybe just a little off kilter today. Look up and out. Now here's the thing. The snows came just a little bit into the face there. You see that? And I should probably put some white on it because I know that we're putting this on a dark background and so it's not going to show up as good. So I'm going to go ahead and add white on top of my orange. You may need to do a few layers of this just to get that color back. And then we will go ahead and throw in some beady eyes. So I'm using the black for that. Black. Put one eye there and one eye there and the mouth. And I'm gonna have to bring the nose in a bit more. So you remember how I thought, you know, we need to delete. So sometimes you even paint it on and you're thinking, it doesn't quite look right. That is never a problem. Or maybe you wanted a smaller nose. So I cleaned off my little flat brush and I'm coming in here and just dragging the nose in a bit. That side. Same with this side. Cleaning that brush good. Just making sure that area is nice and clean. Tap it off and if you need to just grab some paper towel. And dry the extra areas around that. Oops, grabbed a little black. Not too worried. There we go. Not a problem. Okay, back to our brush. And here we go. Putting in the nose. Remember, they got kind of like a roundness to them there because they're stuck into the snow. It's looking cute. I know this is tricky to get in here for you to see. Let's see if I can angle it a bit more. Notice how I went sideways with a few thick strokes. Um, this is because I know it's going to dry and give me those nice lines in the nose. So I moved it to go this way. See? There we go. All the way up. And we've got his little beady eyes looking that way. The little cold mouth that way. I will clean some of the white up. I'm not too worried about that right now. Let's go and do the scarf. So. Here's where we're going to dip our paint into the red this time. And um, sometimes it's helpful when you're going into these little precise areas to take a deep breath and blow it out. So scarves are easy though. I'm just going to put like a little bit of a rectangle there. 
come around. There's one part of the scarf. Jump over, leave a gap. So the reason why I did that is because now we have some definition in the scarf by just using the background color. So it's almost like a little fold there. Come up a little bit higher on there. Her scarf will come up and over the snow. And we'll just drag some of that down. There's part of the scarf there, and the other part there. Now, if you want the, the ends to look like that, great. If you want them to curve in or have tassels, you can do that. And of course, you can um, use white as stripes in the scarf after this dries. So I will probably build up another layer on there, but let's jump back while that's drying to do the little buttons on the belly. Cool button. So got my black. Making sure I don't have too much on here. So we'll go with one there and bigger one there. Oh, look at that. He's so cute. Okay, for the arms, I'm going to use a combination of black and I did grab a little bit of burnt uh, umber because they're going to be sticks. So kind of want it to be have a, a, a woodsy look without deviating too far from the colors that I've used here. Okay, one arm this way. Now remember, take a deep breath in and be gentle. Try to get a nice clean line. There's one arm and let's do the other arm. Let's see if I can come down so you can see. A little tricky for me not to be in right in front of the canvas to do this one. There. Maybe a little thicker on that arm. Always easier to go thick than to go thin, but if I had to go thin, you know what I'd do. Hey! All right. So let's take a look at our snow now, covering our trees and our snow guy while it's drying. Okay, so now I got white on my round little brush, and I'm just going to go ahead and throw some tree, some snow here and there on this tree. Notice how I'm leaving a lot of it, so I'm making sure that the snow is on the tree in strategic spots, but you know, the branches are still there and they are showing. And you, if you don't layer this up, you're not going to have like a snow looking, tr snow filled tree. Sometimes it's hard to paint and talk, <laughs> get into the movements of the art and everything else goes to the wayside, including your speech. But in a way, it's nice because when you're painting, you don't think about too much else. Okay, what you want to do is make sure that you are leaving background showing, right? Because if you don't show the background through it, well, it's not going to look right to you. And you can see where I've left gaps for the brush, and I'm really just using my brush to these white areas in. All right, it wasn't so bad. Let's go and do the, uh, oh, I like it with the top twisted. Let's go do the other ones here. Okay, these are looking pretty good. They do need bases though, so let's go ahead and do the snow cap bases. And for that, I'm literally just taking my white and doing like a mound under that tree, sweeping some of that out. Okay, so go ahead and put all these lovely little mounds. Now again, same with the snow guy, right? He's sitting on a mound. Put that in there and sweep it out. Now because we have these beautiful layers showing through with the other colors, we're going to be able to get away with all these little snow guys. All the mounds that we need. And you don't have to be perfect with this. In fact, see how this isn't? 
looks even better. Right, another guy mound up there. So this is where snow piles come up over to there. And if you want to do a few in the center too, you can, right? Not restricted to not putting more snow on here. Another mound just off that was wind blown in is also nice. And sometimes having the snow crept up against the guy there. Snowman is nice too. Some base ones back here. Now, I remember being a kid, I did not want to go near some of these trees because I knew if I did, I would fall in. And that happened a lot. It was a little bit adventurous. Especially on a ski hill. Okay. I'm going to take a step back here and um, see how this is looking. Okay, pretty good. Now here's the thing, I have that baby blue color that I mixed up. That's the blues with the whites. And that's going to give me a bit of a shadow color, which I want on the base here. And I'll probably put a little bit here. Okay, and then I'm going to rinse out my brush. Grab some white. And what I'm trying to do in this area now is to blend some of that out and up. Now what this will do is we'll give some roundness to my snowman, sort of the shadows of where it might be sitting. Just a little extra touch. I mean, I would you could do lots of work on shadows in the sky, but this is just a nice little simple painting for today that anybody can really do. There we go, second layer to finish off my scarf. Okay. This is definitely a good one to put up for the holidays. Now I'm going to go ahead and sign off on my work with my scratchy little signature. I will put right over here. Hey, I hope you have enjoyed this painting and you have yourself an artful Christmas. Bye.